Chapter 1 The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to shew unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bare record of the word of God, and of the testimony of Jesus Christ, and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein. For the time is at hand. John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you, and peace, from him which is, and which was, and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us, and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion for ever and ever. Amen. Behold, he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, Amen. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, and which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. I John, who also am your brother, and companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos, for the word of God, and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and heard behind me a great voice, as of a trumpet, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and, what thou seest, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and, unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks, the seven candlesticks represent the church of Jesus Christ. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, represents that Jesus Christ is in the middle of the church, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the peps with a golden girdle, his head, of Jesus Christ, and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like undefined brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice is a sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, to the seven pastors of the seven churches, and out of his mouth went a sharp tawaged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shined in his strength, and when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth, and was dead, and, behold, I am alive for evermore, Amen, and had the keys of hell and of death. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels, are the shepherds, of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Chapter 2 Unto the angel, to the pastor, of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith thee that holdeth the seven stars, to the seven pastor, in his right hand, who walked in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, in the middle of, the seven churches. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars. And hast borne, and hast patience, and for my name's sake hast labored, and hast not fainted. Nevertheless I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God and unto the angel, to the pastor, of the church in Smyrna write, These things saith the first and the last, which was dead, and is alive. I know thy works, and tribulation, and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews, and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days, for a few days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be heard of the second death, this is the death of the wicked and the judgment against them according to what is written in the books and in the book of life. And to the angel, to the pastor, of the church in Pergamus write, These things saith he which hath the sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works, and where thou dwellst, even where Satan's seat is. And thou holdst fast my name, and hast not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you, where Satan dwelt. 
But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Bela to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man, no right saving he that receiveth it. And unto the angel, to the pastor, of the church in Teodira write, These things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding I have a few things against thee, because thou suffers that woman Jezebel, which killed herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds, and I will kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works, but unto you I say, and unto the rest in Teodira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan, as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden, but that which ye have already hold fast shall I come, and he that overcometh, and keep my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father, and I will give him the morning star. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Chapter 3 And unto the angel, to the pastor, of the church in Sardis write. These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God, he who has the fullness of the Spirit of God, and the seven stars, the one with the seven churches. I know thy works, that thou hast a name that thou livest, and art, dead. Be watchful, and strengthen the things which remain, that are ready to die. For I have not found my works perfect before God. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast, and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Thou hast a few names even in Sardis which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white rent. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father, and before his angels. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches, and to the angel, to the pastor, of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. I know thy works, behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews, and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out, of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches, and unto the angel, to the pastor, of the church of the Laodiceans write. These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot, I would thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spill thee out of my mouth. Because thou zarest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayst be rich, and white rent, that thou mayst be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with thy soft, that thou mayst, see, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door, and knock. If any man hear my voice, and open the door, I will come into him, and will sup with him, and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and am set down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches.
Chapter 4 After this I looked, and, behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will shew thee things which must be hereafter. I climbed out of the body, and immediately I was in the spirit. And, behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne, God the Father sitting, and he that sat was Tolu, K upon like a jasper, stone whose appearance is shown as emanating bright flashes of different colors, and a sardine stone, stone of a translucent color. And there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald, and round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white rent, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal, and in the midst of the throne, and round about the throne, were four beasts full of eyes before and behind, these living beings with high probability are cherubim. For more information read Ezekiel chapter 1 and 10, John describes them in a simple way as described by Ezekiel. And the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast like a calf, and the third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was, and is, and is to come. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth for ever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne, and worship him that liveth for ever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Chapter 5 And I saw on the right hand of him that sat on the throne, God the Father, a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book, and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look therein. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look therein. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not. Behold, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, hath prevailed to open the book, Jesus Christ who conquered, and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and, lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps, and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred, and tongue, and people, and nation. And hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders. And the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand, is very large amount, impossible to calculate, and thousands of thousands, means a lot of large amount. Saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power, and riches, and wisdom, and strength, and honor, and glory, and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven, and on the earth, and under the earth, and such as are in the sea, and all that are in them, heard I saying, Blessing, and honor, and glory, and power, be unto him that sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb for ever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth for ever and ever. Chapter 6 And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold a white horse, it is a great power that comes from God. And he that sat on him had a bow, which is for the beginning of a battle. And a crown was given unto him, he was given authority. And he went, forth conquering, and to conquer, he went winning to obtain victory. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, representing a great power with anger in war. And power was given to him that sat there and to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was, given unto him a great sword, for a big kill among men. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo a black horse, representing negative activity. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances, representing supply and demand, activity and economic activity, in his hand. 
And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, representing changes in prices and difficulty in acquiring food. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine, in some areas of supplies God does not allow supply and demand to be damaged. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold a pale horse, a great authority and power, representing the firm and precise of God, what will surely happen. And his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him. And power was given, unto them over the fourth part of the earth, to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God, and for the testimony which they held, these are those who have achieved victory over the beast. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them, that they should rest yet for a little season, until their fellow servants also and their brethren, that should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and, lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, the material mane used as thick horse hair from the tail or neck, and the moon became as blood, this is reddish in appearance. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, this can be a rain of rocks that with the friction of the atmosphere are lit in fire that are similar to falling stars, even as a fig tree gives depth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, this may be the effect of smoke moving in the atmosphere produced by rocks lit in fire. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places, hear thee. Earthquake causes a big change on earth, moving the islands from their original place and the mountains change their position. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty meh, and every bendman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. And said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, understand here that the big day of God's wrath is here, and who shall be able to stand? Chapter 7 And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. And there were sealed in hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Esser were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Nephthalim were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Manas were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Simeon were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Levi were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Issachar were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Zeglon were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Joseph were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed twelve thousand. After this I beheld, and, lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations, and kindreds, and people, and tons, stood before the throne, and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne, and about the elders and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces, and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing, and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might, be unto our God for ever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and had washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Chapter 8 And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. 
and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer, and filled it with fire of the altar, and cast it into the earth. And there were voices, and thunderings, and lightnings, and an earthquake. And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. The first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth. And the third part of trees was burned up, and all green grass was burned up. And the second angel sounded, and as it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, a large city or large portion of a nation that lit on fire fell into the sea. And the third part of the sea became blood. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea, and had life, died. And the third part of the ships were destroyed, here it looks like there were many ships in the place where that large portion of earth fell into the sea. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, an angel descending rapidly from heaven to earth, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers, and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood, the one granted to the angel. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died of the waters, because they were made bitter. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars. So as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise, what happens here is an effect that reduces the intensity of day and night light into two thirds. And I beheld, and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, a living being, an angel, saying with a loud voice, Woe, 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 to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound. Chapter 9 And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star, an angel, fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit, and he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit, and there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, demons came out, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion, when he strike the man. And in those days shall men seek death, and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle and on their heads were as it were crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men, and they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions, and they had breastplates, as it were breastplates of iron, and the sound of their winds was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle, and they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months, and they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. One woe is past, and, behold, there come two woes more hereafter. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar which is before God, saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour, and a day, and a month, and a year, for to slay the third part of men. And the number of the army of the horsemen were two hundred thousand thousand, this is an army of creatures and spiritual beings. And I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire, and of jacinth, and brimstone. And the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions. And out of their mouths issued fire and smoke, and brimstone. By these three was the third part of men killed, by the fire, and by the smoke, and by the brainstone, which issued out of their mouths, for their power is in their mouth, and in their tails, for their tails were like unto serpents, and had heads, and with them they do hurt, and the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils, and idols of gold, and silver, and brass, and stone, and of wood, which neither can see, nor hear, nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. Chapter 10 And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, Jesus Christ, clothed with a cloud. And a rainbow was upon his head, and his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. And he had in his hand a little book open. And he set his right foot upon the sea, and his left foot on the earth. And cried with a loud voice, as when a lion roareth. And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices, These are the seven spirits of God that Jesus Christ has. 
and when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, the seven spirits of God, I was about to write. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. And the angel, Jesus Christ, which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth lifted up his hand to heaven, and savoured by him that liveth for ever and ever, who created heaven, and the things that therein are, and the earth, and the things that therein are, and the sea, and the things which are therein, that there should be time no longer, means the end of some events. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, as he hath declared to his servants the prophets. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again, and said, Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel, of Jesus Christ, which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went unto the angel, I went to Jesus Christ, and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it, and eat it up and it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand, of Jesus Christ, and ate it up, and it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, Thou must prep see again before many peoples, and nations, and tons, and kings. Chapter 11 And there was given me a reed like unto a rod. And the angel stood, saying, Rise, and measure the temple of God, and the altar, and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple leave out, and measure it not. For it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prep see a thousand two hundred and threescore days, clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees, and the two candlesticks, with high probability these must be Moses and Elijah, their works in this period of time are very similar to those they did in their original time on earth, standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth, and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and had power over waters to turn them to blood, and to smit the earth with all plagues, as often as they will. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast, the world government operated by the ten kingdoms loved by Satan, that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit, shall make war against them, and shall overcome them, and kill them and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, this is Jerusalem, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified, and they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and in half, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves, and they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them, and make merry, and shall send gifts one to another, because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. And after three days and in half the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them, and they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them, and the same hour was their great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were affrighted, and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe is past, and, behold, the third woe cometh quickly. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord, and of his Christ, and he shall reign for ever and ever. And the four and twenty elders, which sat before God on their seats, fell upon their faces, and worshipped God, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art, and west, and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power, and hast reigned. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shalt give reward unto thy servants the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small, and great, and shalt destroy them which destroy the earth. And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament, and there were lightnings, and voices, and thunderings, and an earthquake, and great hail. Chapter 12 And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, this woman represents the people of God, the people of Israel, and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. This describes how the Jewish people were in the days prior to the coming of Jesus Christ, with the suffering and pain of being under the Roman Empire and wishing for a deliverer to come. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold a great red dragon, this dragon represents the devil with his world empires, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads, each of the heads are, the world empires and the ten horns are, the world empire of the last days of our era ruled by ten kingdoms forming a council, 
and his tail, from Satan, drew the third part of the stars of heaven, these are now the demons with Satan, a third part, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon, Satan, stood before the woman, the people of Israel, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child, to Jesus Christ, as soon as it was born, Satan's plan to kill Jesus. Satan did not quite understand God's plan, but he did intend to kill Jesus. And she brought forth a man-child, gave birth to Jesus, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, with strong arm. And her child, Jesus, was caught up unto God, and to his throne. And the woman, Israel el Pueblo del Señor Acuin Dios la Preper Luger en el Desierto en los Momentos en que esta Irquia no el Imprio Mundial de Dias Rhinos, fled into the wilderness, where she had the place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, Satan, and the dragon, Satan, fought and his angels, the demons, and prevailed not, neither was their place found, for Satan and his demons, any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, called the devil, and Satan, which deceived at the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels, his demons, were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation, and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon, Satan, saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman, which represents the people of Israel, which brought forth the man-child, who is Jesus Christ. And to the woman, the people of God, were given two wings of a great eagle, this seems to be a powerful nation that helps the people of God, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, here, the people of God, receive, help in this transfer to a place that appears to be part of the holy land that God gave to his people, where she is nursed for a time, one year, and times, two years, and half a time, half of a year, three and a half years in total, from the face of the serpent, away from Satan and the world empire of the ten kingdoms. And the serpent, Satan, cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, to the people of God, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, the people of God, and the earth opened her mouth, and swallowed up the flood which the dragon, Satan, cast out of his mouth. And the dragon, Satan, was red with the woman, the people of God, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God, and had the testimony of Jesus Christ. Chapter 13 and I, John, stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, the world empire of ten kingdoms of the last days, and upon his horns ten crowns, powers granted to each of the ten kingdoms of the last day world empire, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy, each world empire operated with intense blasphemy, and the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, the leopard knows how to chase its prey very well, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, the bear walks very firmly on its feet, and his mouth is the mouth of a lion, the leon, has powerful jaws and they are carnivorous, and the dragon, Satan, gave him his power, and his seat, and great authority, and I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, this head is the ten kingdom empire that will rule the earth in the last days of this era and his deadly wound was healed, this death wound is a war that Satan will make, against three of these kingdoms and they will be torn down and after this the empire recovers, and all the world wondered after the beast, this beast is the world empire of ten kingdoms, and they worshipped the dragon, Satan, which gave power unto the beast, the world empire ten kingdoms of the last days, and they worshipped the beast, saying, who is like unto the beast, who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things, with disrespect that is offensive, and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name, and his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints, and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds, and tons, and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that will death in the captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, which rises from earth seems to represent that it is active exercising functions on earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and that it has two horns as a lamb, it indicates. 
that it has two powers and that it is related in some way to a lamb, and he spake as a dragon, and speaking like a dragon indicates that there is deception in it. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him, this indicates that it acts in coordination and with the authority of the first wild beast, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed, this indicates that it works in favor of the first wild beast and makes all the inhabitants of the earth accept and adore it. This second beast is a religious organization operating on earth, and he doth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, this sign of bringing down fire from heaven has been an act that Satan has also performed in the past, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast, which had thee wound by a sword, and did live, here he orders that an image be made of the wild beast, behavior that has also happened in the past in false religious organizations, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak, and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed, as happened in Nagyakagnsar's empire that those who did not worship the image were ordered to kill, and he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand, or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 666. Chapter 14 and I looked, and, lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Sen, and with him an hundred forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven, as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne, and before the four beasts, and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand, which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which were not defiled with women for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb, and in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne at God. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and every nation, and kindred, and tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him that made heaven, and earth, and the sea, and the fountains of waters. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast, to the government system, and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead, or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast, to the government system, and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints, here are they that keep the commandments of God, and the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, said the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. And I looked, and behold a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, to Jesus Christ, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, to Jesus Christ, thrust in thy sickle, and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud, Jesus Christ, thrust in the sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. And another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar, from the place of sacrifice, which had power over fire, and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in my sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. And the angel thrust in the sickle into the earth, and gathered the vine of the earth, and cast it into the great windpress of the wrath of God. And the windpress was trodden without the city, and blood came out of the windpress, even unto the horse bridles, by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs, this is for two hundred and seventy-nine kilometers or one hundred and seventy-four miles, a large measure. Chapter 15 and I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. And I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire, 
and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, to the world government, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. And they sing the song of Moses the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty, just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints, who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy, for all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. And after that I looked, and, behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened. And the seven angels came out of the temple, having the seven plagues, clothed in pure and white linen, and having their breasts girded with golden girdles. And one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels seven golden vials full of the wrath of God, who liveth for ever and ever. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God, and from his power. And no man was able to enter into the temple, till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. Chapter 16 and I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways, and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went, and poured out his vial upon the earth. And there fell a noise and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea. And it became as the blood of a dead man. And every living soul died in the sea. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters. And they became blood. And I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art, and west, and shalt be, because thou hast judged us. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seed of the beast, on the throne at the world government of the last days of our era. And his kingdom was full of darkness, the kingdom of the beast that is this world government of the last days, and they gnawed their tongues for pain, and blasphemed, insulted with invective, the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and repented not of their deeds. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, from the top leader led by Satan, from the world empire, and out of the mouth of the beast, of the leaders of the world empire, and out of the mouth, of the false prophet, of the maximum leader of the religious organization. For they are the spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world, to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth, and keep his garments, lest he walk naked, and they see his shame. And he gathered them together unto a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air. And there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven, from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were voices, and thunders, and lightnings. And there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake, and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God, to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent, about seventy-five pounds each. And men blasphemed God, insulted with invective, because of the plague of the hail. For the plague, thereof was exceeding great. Chapter 17 And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, sitting on places that are not firm. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads, which are seven world empires in the history of mankind, and ten horns, which are ten kings that will rule the last world empire of this era. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthings of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints, and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? 
I will tell thee the mystery of the woman, and of the beast that careth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was, and is not, it was because it was active in the past and it is not, because the one we are announcing has not yet arrived and is yet to come, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, because it comes with all the strength of Satan in the world empire of the ten kingdoms of the last days of this era, and go into perdition, because she will be judged, found guilty and taken to eternal punishment by our Almighty God, and they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was, and is not, and yet is, and here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains, each of the seven mountains represents a great world empire, for seven in total, on which the woman sitteth, the same power is sitting on them. This is Satan who has acted and will act on each of the seven world empires. And there are seven kings, each world empire has a ruler, seven kings in total, whom Satan has used for his purposes of destroying the human race. Five are fallen, five world empires before John's time have passed, and one is. The Roman Empire is what it is, the one in action when the book of Revelation is written, and the other is not yet come, the world empire of the ten kingdoms of the last days of this era that is to come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space, the total time will be seven years. And the beast that was, and is not, the world empire of the ten kingdoms of the last days that is not, because it is not yet in function, even he is the eighth, she will be the eighth when Satan is released after the millennium and returns again to deceive the nations of the earth, and is of the seven, and goeth into perdition, of the seven it is because it is the same Satan who has deceived the nations on earth in a great way with these world empires, and the destruction goes, because he will be defeated by the Almighty God. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, the world empire of the ten kings of the last days of our era, which have received no kingdom as yet, they are not yet in action, they are about to take action in these last days of our era, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast, for a short time they will be in action governed to the world accompanied and directed by Satan, the time they will be will be seven years. These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These ten kings function in the form of a council with the same objective and grant all their power and authority to the beast, that is Satan. These, this world empire of ten kings ruled by Satan, shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of lords, and King of kings, and they that are with him are called, and chosen, and faithful. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, water here represents a non-firm foundation, where the horse sitteth, are peoples, and multitudes, and nations, and towns, and the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these ten kingdoms and the system of government of the world empire, these shall hate the whore, the time will come when the leaders of these ten kingdoms and the total world government system formed by the men who are in office in this government will abhor the conduct of the maximum leader and the leaders of the religious organization. This must be consequence of which they always sought, to rule on the world government system. Here we see in a marked way a behavior of men against men, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree, and give their kingdom unto the beast, because God's plan was to allow Satan to rule a kingdom of nations government and not a religious organization to rule over a kingdom of nations government, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city, which reigneth over the kings of the earth, it has also been called the big city, the world government system that Satan has ruled over the kingdoms of the nations of the earth, throughout history. Chapter 18 And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven, saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works. In the cup which she hath filled filled to her double, how much she hath glorified herself, and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am now a widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death, and mourning, and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. And the kings of the earth, who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her, shall bewail her, and lament for her, when they shall see the smoke of her burning. 
standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city! For in one hour is thy judgment come, and the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more. The merchandise of gold, and silver, and precious stones, and of pearls, and fine linen, and purple, and silk, and scarlet, and all teen wood, and all manner vessels of ivory, and all manner vessels of most precious wood, and of brass, and iron, and marble, and cinnamon, and odors, and ointments, and frankincense, and wine, and oil, and fine flour, and wheat, and beasts, and sheep, and horses, and chariots, and slaves, and souls of men and the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee, and all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. The merchants of these things, which were made rich by her, shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, that great city, that was clothed in fine linen, and purple, and scarlet, and decked with gold, and precious stones, and earls. For in one hour, in a short time, so great riches is come to net, and every ship mister, and all the company and ships, and sailors, and as many as trade by sea, stood afar off, and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust on their heads, and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. For in one hour is she made desolate. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets. For God hath avenged you on her, and a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone, and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down, and shall be found no more at all, and the voice of harpers, and musicians, and of pipers, and trumpeters, shall be heard no more at all in thee, and no craftsman, of whatsoever craft he be, shall be found any more in thee, and the sound of a millstone shall be heard, no more at all in thee, and the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived, and in her was found the blood of prophets, and of saints, and of all that were slain upon the earth. Chapter 19 And after these things I heard a great voice of much people in heaven, saying, Elawah, salvation, and glory, and honor, and power, unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments, for he hath judged the great hour, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again they said, Elawa. And her smoke rose up for ever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Elawa. And a voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thunderings, saying, Elawa, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice, and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he saith unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God, and I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not, I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus, worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And I saw heaven opened, and behold a white horse, a horse representing the pure and powerful, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war, this is Jesus Christ. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written, that no man knew, but he himself, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God, and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smit the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the windpress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings, and Lord of Lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast, the world empire that rules in the last days, and the kings of the earth, to the rulers of the earth, and their armies, gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse, against Jesus Christ. 
and against his army, and against the army of Jesus Christ. And the beast was taken, the maximum leader of the world empire that rules in the last days, and with him the false prophet, the maximum leader of the religious organization, that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive, the maximum leader of the government and the maximum leader of the religious organization, into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth. And all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Chapter 20 And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. And cast him into the bottomless pit, and shot him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given under them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads, or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years, but the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection, the first resurrection is that of the souls of those who had been beheaded because of the testimony of Jesus and because of the word of God, those who did not worship the beast or the image of it and did not receive the mark on the forehead and on their hand and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, because they achieved victory and will not die. The second death is the eternal death that will receive the wicked and the judgment that will be made with open books and the book of life open. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison, and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. Gag, this was prophesied by Ezekiel and represents a leadership in satanic hosts that will try to attack the people of God. Here it symbolizes the pagan nations that will try to attack the people of God, and Megag, similarly, Megag represents a cruel enemy, attacking God's people, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth, and compassed the camp of the saints about, and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven, and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast, the maximum leader of the world empire of these last days, and the false prophet, the maximum leader of the religious organization, are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them, this is an elimination of heaven and earth today, remember that there are new, heavens and new earth prophesied, and I saw the dead, those who did not repent, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were, written in the books, according to their works, and the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the second death is the consequence that corresponds to physically die without regret. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Chapter 21 And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I John saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, God with Jesus Christ, they will erase all negative memories that we have acquired on earth and will no longer be remembered in our minds, never ever, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done, God's mission to men is accomplished. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a first of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful, and unbelieving, and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second, death. 
And there came unto me one of the seven angels which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will shew thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. And her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. And had a wall great and high, about two hundred and fifty feet tall, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and names written therein, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates, and the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city, and the gates thereof, and the wall thereof, and the city lith four square, and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the red, twelve thousand furlongs, this is approximately two thousand ninety kilometers or one thousand three hundred six miles on each of its three sides. The length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. And he measured the wall thereof, an hundred and forty and four cubits, which is approximately seventy-six meters or two hundred and fifty feet, according to the measure of a man, that is, of the angel. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper, and the city was pure gold, like unto clear glass, and the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second, sapphire, the third, a calcedony, the fourth, an emerald, the fifth, sardonyx. The sixth, Sardius, the seventh, Chrysolite, the eighth, Beryl, the ninth, a Topaz, the tenth, a Chrysoprasus, the eleventh, a Jacinth, the twelfth, an Amethyst, and the twelve gates were twelve pearls, every several gate was of one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold, as it were transparent glass, and I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it, and the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof, and the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it, and the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there, and they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it, and there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever work the abomination, or make it the lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Chapter 22 and he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign for ever and ever. And he said unto me, These saints are faithful and true, and the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to shew unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly, blessed is he that keep the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And I John saw these things, and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Then said he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book, worship God. And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still, and he which is filthy, let him be filthy still, and he that is righteous, let him be righteous still, and he that is holy, let him be holy still. And, behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter him through the gates into the city. For without are dogs, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I Jesus have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, and the bright and morning star. And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. And let him that Herod say, Come. And let him that is Aphrist come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that Herod the words of the prophecy of this book, If any man shall act unto these things, God shall act unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. He which testified these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. 
Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.